video on Lua filters. Again, the context here, so I'm working on a Quarto extension. Here's my extension, and within this I specify this uh, Lua filter. It's a script that is run after the file is loaded in, reads in the YAML, and then it's going to run this script here, and that script is going to be updating the metadata for me which I will later use in a Pandoc template. So, theme today is functions. So within your uh, Lua filter script, you can define functions. And here are some of the functions that I have defined. So, um, first off, I have a function to test if a metadata is empty, so did the user pass it in? If it's nil or it's um, equal to just nothing, um, then it's empty. And I often need to test that, so that's a, a function I'm using constantly in this script. I also sometimes need to test if a file exists. So here's a lo local function, there's the name of the function, here's its argument. You can have multiple arguments. This just has one. And um, in this case, it's testing if you can open up name. And if you can't, it returns false. Another common one I need is I need the value of uh, some metadata. And um, metadata is special, as I've said before, and you, um, you can't just like pass in its value. It would not give you anything useful. So instead, there are some utilities, and this one here, stringify, is really useful. It's going to make that value into a string. That is only really going to make sense if it's a single value. Sometimes the metadata is a table, so that only makes sense there. But a lot of times it's just a single value, like alignment equals left. So that's going to return string version. This is a function to test if a, a table has a particular value. That's a pretty common thing I need to do. I need to test if the user passed in a uh, allowed value. So to explain this function, I need to briefly show you what tables look like. And so they have this form with the curly brackets here that you have a key value, so that's the key, and then you have the value of that. So everything's going to be, be a pair, key value, pair. So you can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pairs here. And this is the key value, and this is the value. The value can be anything. You know, it can be another table, can be a function, whatever. Um, so when you have these curly brackets, you always have the key value, even if you didn't specify it. So you see in this example, I did specify it, but even if I didn't, it exists. So like this right here, the key values are numbers. So one, two, etc. Okay. And then um, just so you can see how you would, let's say if this is um, tab. So if I want to get um, the value. I can do that. Um, or if I gave it a name, uh, like up here at the top here, I can say something like this. Um, like that. Let's get that value. Okay, so let's jump back over to this and now I can explain this function. So this is asking, does this table have this particular value in it? This is a very specific function that I'm using and the types of tables I'm passing in uh, have this form like this. They're very simple. They're just values. And so what this does is it's a for loop and it goes through each pair of the table. And the index is the key and the value is the value. So it's going to go through each table and it'll go through each pair. And the index is going to be this and the value is going to be that sign. So it's saying, you know, if the value equals whatever I'm testing, yes, return true. If it doesn't, uh, return false. 
It's a little more complicated one to when I need to dump a, um, a table. So as I said, get value doesn't really work on tables. It doesn't work on tables. Um, so uh, sometimes I need to see what's in a table. So this is really, um, this is a debugging function. And um, yeah, so let's go through this one. This is a, a function that is checking the uh, value of some uh, YAML. And it's going to use some of the functions that I just described. So in this case, say, what, what is that YAML element? Um, so it says, you know, go get it. So that, that's going to look something like, you know, M for me, these are how like, oops, sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, so they'll, it'll be something that looks kind of like this for me. Okay. So that might be like something that I'm testing. So that would be this right here would be what I'd be passing in here. The YAML text is just what I'm going to put in my error message. I mean, I could try to get it from what I'm passing in, but it was just easier just to write that manually. And then OK values is the values that it can be. So you can see this is a function with three arguments. So first thing that it's doing is it's um, stringifying the value in this element that I passed in. And then it's asking, does um, what the user passed in, is it one of the OK values? And if it's not, it's going to print this error and then return false. So this is just her error checking. Notice something about the print here. You have these dot dots. This is string concatenation. So if I do, you know, this, it's just going to, it's going to be title page and then um, it's going to have the YAML text that I want here is set to and this whatever the user passed in. And then I say, um, but, you know, it can be these. So it tells the user, this is what you passed in. That's not allowed. These are what is allowed. Okay. That's it for functions in a Lua filter.